All right, guys, today I have Becky Garrison, an Ebby Halliday agent. Um, and you have been with Ebby for how many years now? Ooh, with Ebby for about 15 years or 18 years. Um, I've been in the business almost 20. 20 in years. my 20th year, yes. Okay, so walk me through. Obviously, you liked Ebby Halliday in the very beginning of your career. I did. And yes. then you, you've stuck with it the whole time. Yes. So tell me why you uh, made the quick switch over in the, in the very beginning and then... Honestly, what's kept you around for so long? Yeah, I like Abby, but... No. Oh, I do too. Yeah. Um, you know, I kind of got into the real estate business by chance. Uh, we moved to Texas, and my youngest went to kindergarten, and my neighbor always saw me walking my dog every morning and going to play tennis, and he said, um, hey, you should get your real estate license and come to work with me. And I thought, why not? My knees were not liking the three to four days of tennis play I was doing every week. And so I thought, let's get my real estate license. So I did and went to work for this fella and um, had a great experience. Stayed with him for three and a half years. Um, his motto was buy with me and you can sell for free. So basically I was doing two for one and that was a lot of work for a little money. Yeah. Because then I still split the money with the brokerage too. So um, I got involved right away with the Realtor Association, met a lot of agents, um, got plugged in to not only my local association, but the Texas Realtors Association. And um, through meeting a lot of agents, I got to feel out what different brokerages were like. And I really liked the Ebby agents that I saw in my area. Um, the more I got to know about Miss Ebby, I liked her story, her background. What an amazing yes, story, yes. the Ebby. So I felt Ebby like story, yeah. that, was, that was where I, I belonged. Um, I come from a family of a lot of strong women and a lot of strong women who lived a long time. Ebby lived to be 103. My um, and she worked. She did all the she way up to the until office. The end. Yeah. I, I just love yeah. that I got to meet her and, and work with her. Uh, but my grandmother, paternal grandmother, died at 107, and she lived in her own home until she was 103. Wow! And then my mother is she'll be 89 this year. Um, that gal is something else. She plays pickleball three or four times a week. She plays duplicate bridge online. She teaches Sunday school. She still has dinner parties. She's just an amazing woman. Well, by that logic, yeah. I think you're going to be selling houses for the next half century. <laughs> and I think the thing about selling houses, um, just being in real estate and, you know, what's ahead, you know, it's just a good skill set for me it's mm -hmm. um i have a design background um, my first 10 years out of college was working for an architectural engineering firm um, i did interior design and that has just paired so well with a career in real estate so i also love relationships and um, i'm very outgoing and just enjoy being out and about and so my skill set with my personality set just really meshes well for real estate and it's just been a fun career i've enjoyed it so well, you i mentioned, may stay a while you yeah you mentioned <laughs> you mesh well with it real estate what a lot of people don't know some do is it, 80 percent of real estate agents don't make it past the first year so when wow. you say you meshed well with it i mean obviously 20 years down the road mm -hmm. you've been doing something right do you think there's something that separates you from the others or do you think it's well, just a career that worked well I, for I you. I think it is just a career that works well. And I think that it is important to when, in, when you're working in any field for it to be a good fit. Um, mm -hmm. There are just too many things involved that if you're not feeling it, it's not going to be fun. Whereas it is such a good fit for me that... Um, so you have fun. I, that that's what my life is all about. I just want to have fun. Yeah. And it has been. It's been great. Of course, there are moments. So every agent can tell you there are moments. 
Um, not every transaction is going to be fun, but uh, in general... Questioning whether or not you're going to continue being an agent. Oh yeah, there yeah. are definitely those days. And you know, that may be when you're having a transaction with another agent that maybe shouldn't be an agent. <laughs> or just with a, with a difficult client on either side. Um, it just happens. Well, we, I mean, you know us, we do thousand inspections a year. So we, we get to deal with quite yes, a few you do. clients that are, uh, we'll call them suboptimal yes. customers. Yes. Every once in a while, what I say at least once a month, we get threatened with litigation. And it's usually the seller, mm -hmm. not the buyer. Mm -hmm. It's usually the seller that, especially if a house has been inspected more than once. So they're on the, like the third contract and it's the third time an inspector's been in there. If the previous two inspectors maybe did just even left the air conditioner at 80 mm -hmm. instead of 70, yeah. we get a list of all the things that were inappropriate. Well, I think you all do a good job of taking that exit video. I think that's a really brilliant thing that you do. Yeah, I appreciate that. That is, mm -hmm. you know, that when you, when you go to the zoo and there's a sign that says, don't climb over the fence and play with the gorillas, it's because someone did it, right? right? So. <laughs> The side wouldn't be there unless someone did it. Yes. Um, the same thing for us. We would not be filming the end, the exit video, yes. if we weren't getting blamed for things that weren't. Mm -hmm. And uh, the the truth of the matter is, the the one that really set us to say, okay, we got to start doing this. We were in a on a property shortly before a big freeze. Uh oh shoot! And the pool froze and broke. The pump broke and some pipes had broken six inches below the surface. And they said it was our fault. And it just so happened that that inspector had done his own version of an exit video and didn't tell me he was doing them. But, and this is very, on, very early on in the businesses. So it was just me and two other inspectors. And I didn't know he was doing it. And he had footage of saying all the circuit breakers have been reset. The pool is set to the auto position. He films it, closes the box, walks away. And it was that eight seconds or so that saved me about $20,000. Oh my goodness. Because there wasn't going to be any proof that we didn't do it and we were the last ones to be there. Of course, we had the video footage and later the, the seller admitted that they had been out messing with the pool to prep it for the ice, but... They wanted to blame it on you. Yeah. Oh. They knew that it was their fault. And it's, it's, you know, it's like when the body cam footage shows up and it, it, everything suddenly becomes clear. Right. It was the same situation. And right. so now it's common practice for us. Yeah. Very good. Uh-huh. Very good. I know. Got your heart rate going there, didn't I? <laughs> you know, one of the things that I will say um, early in my career, right away, um, I formed an alliance with my inspectors. And... I wanted to learn as much as I could from them. So Very I, would, yeah. I would go to every inspection and, you know, I'd ask ahead of time if I could be there. And I would just follow the inspector around, ask a few questions, try my best not to get in the way, but I just can't tell you how beneficial that was. And mm -hmm. to this day, I feel like I know so much just from attending inspections. You can probably walk into a house for the initial showing and point out 10 or 15 items that for need to sure. be addressed. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I feel like that's a benefit uh, to being an agent is being able to point out those things at a time and um, helping them, either a buyer or a seller, understand the ramifications of that particular deficiency. Absolutely. So it's uh, inspections are wonderful and um, I just appreciate my relationship with the inspectors. So then I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that even in those crazy times where people were waiving inspection, waving appraisal, you were still recommending inspections? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. You know, yeah. even if you waived the option period in those very crazy times, I would still say, you should have an inspection. Mm -hmm. You need to know. That brings up a, yeah, so that point exactly. A lot, for those that are unaware, basically what was happening a few years ago is the options were so short and you had to, because no one could get a house because the supply and demand, the ratio was way off. People were putting hundreds of thousands of dollars over value and to sweeten the deal, they were saying no option period, we're just gonna right. buy it as right. is. But you could still get an inspection report so you know. So you know what you're walking into and you know yeah. that I need another $50,000 or so to fix and the then, plumbing issue. And then, too, if it was really bad, you just 
you ate get the ready earnest to money. lose some money. Yeah. Yeah. But down the road, that might have been the smart thing to 5, do. Five thousand is less than fifty thousand. So. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. No, those were crazy times. I'm glad we're out of that. That just was not good for anybody. No. Nobody won. Mm -mm. And the people that won those bids and got into the houses today are underwater. They're upside down in those loans. Yeah. Sellers won. Yes. Yeah. Sellers some won. sellers won. Some sellers definitely won. Yeah. All right, so Becky brought in uh, Goya, which I've always known as get off your ass, eat the beans and get off your ass. Uh, but this is from your garden. It is. So tell me what we have here in, in our Goya yeah, They're zinnias. Planter. They're all zinnias. And then this is a weed right there. But it's a pretty weed, and it makes a good flower arrangement. But <laughs> I like it. It's better than my fake plants. We don't have any windows in here, so I can't, can't be a botanist. And, and that... Um, that can of beans is from dinner last night. Okay. So I save cans and jars and just uh, I enjoy cutting my flowers and taking them to people when I can. So do you have a pretty big so, garden? No, no, no. This is in a front flower bed. Okay. But uh, the more you cut, the more they bloom. That's true. Yeah, that's true. And this a hobby or just it came yes. out of nowhere? What? It's a hobby. Yeah. You know, I would say... Hmm, early teens maybe, um, at my parents' house, my, the next door neighbor had a wonderful vegetable garden. So I asked him to help me. And so I built my own little vegetable garden in my parents' yard. And I've just always been into plants and growing things. I have uh, butternut squash and cabbage and I've grown beets and I've got some broccoli coming up right now. Broccoli? So it's, yeah, but it's not a big garden. It's just, um, wherever the sprinklers are. So I'm on uh, a little over an acre, but it's not all sprinkled. So, you know, you just plant things where it will grow and you you just see what, what works. So Maddie, who, she runs Element Inspection. She, you've spoken to her on the phone. Um, at her house, she has the tiniest, tiniest, it can't be more than a foot wide strip of dirt that's maybe 10 feet long. And that's her garden that she's wow. so proud of. And it's got a lot of stuff in it. Wow. Yeah, but it's it's kind of fun that just even the smallest really bit is. of soil you can do almost anything right. with. No, I, I just love growing things. That's like um, my morning ritual. So I'll get up and get some coffee and just uh, do some weeding or pruning or whatever needs to be done. It's like my quiet time before the, before the day before starts. Slow before the storm. Mm -hmm. Are you a... Um, a bougie coffee drinker, or are you just more Folgers from a can just, type? You know, it, not bougie and not Folgers, somewhere in between. But, yep, just the percolator, you know. Okay. Got the Cuisinart coffee maker. There you so, go. Yep. Um, and the husband that makes it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a bit more bougie. I, w I weigh out my beans on a scale in the morning and then grind them. And, Very nice. Yeah. But then I'll... Uh, I think I would enjoy that, too. Put a random piece of meat on the stove and just eat it down. Not bougie in that regard, but some things. Yeah. Some things you got to be. I'm pretty simple. Yeah. Yep. So, Ebby Halliday, mm -hmm. obviously an inspiration, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the woman was an absolute force. She worked mm -hmm. up until she died, basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and she built, I think it was 1945 that she started it, right? She did. Yeah. So, from 45 until... The early 2000s, yeah. she was just absolutely running a train, mm -hmm. full force, from just her to this giant business, mm -hmm. uh, predominantly the DFW market. And, yes. it, uh, and as I always know it is to be, I wouldn't say luxury, but very professional brokerage. Mm -hmm. Well-dressed, well-educated mm -hmm. agents, right. well-spoken. Right. And that's, that's always the image I got, and that was mm -hmm. very much Ebby. Mm -hmm. So she's been definitely an inspiration to you. Right, yes. You know? You know, with a funny, funny thing. I remember um, I joined in 2008, and Ebby still expected women to wear hose, panty hose. Yes. Oh my gosh. Um, hey, it's her business. Yeah, <laughs> she's. She didn't want blue jeans in the office. No. So finally, that changed a little bit when blue jeans got a little bit of a maybe couture nod, and um, <laughs> with the event of farm and ranch, more agents doing farm and ranch, she would allow it. But um, yeah, it, it was an interesting time. Yeah. But I mean, the, you got to listen to what she says and go, well, it worked for uh, almost a full century. It did. So obviously she's doing something right. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, even today, she had three pillars. It was pillars to the community, to the client, and to the industry. Mm -hmm. And again, those three things are so important. It, you know, you, you serve your clients, you serve your community, and you serve the industry. And, and she did all of those and um, has inspired so many other agents to do all those too. Um, you know, one of the things that when I started early in my career, I got involved with Texas Realtors, and um, that was very interesting. She was very involved in not only Texas Realtors, but NAR and the Women Council of Realtors, and there are many agents who have no idea what goes on in Austin and don't know about all the back end of, of running things, and that's a whole nother business. I mean, it's a whole nother set of knowledge, the background of real estate. Yeah, a lot of agents don't, they don't look around at what's right. building, what is causing their income, basically, yeah. and how they're able to operate. Right. Yeah. They became very aware recently. Yes, with NAR. very aware. You know, I also served on the Netris Board of Directors for about six years, and that was really interesting because what is that? I'm that, not familiar. That's the MLS. Okay, all right. Netris is uh, North Texas Real Estate Information Systems, and uh, the MLS makes all kinds of decisions, um, you know, including uh, giving Zillow access to back end uh, that happened years ago. That was pretty awful. To um, real estate yeah. tax, to RPR, all those things that are on the website, that board of directors is making those decisions. So that was that was really interesting to be part of for a while too. Yeah, we so we're involved as an affiliate at the different um, associations. Mm -hmm. And what I always find interesting is the inspector's license is controlled by Texas Real Estate Commission. Yes. But they which is the same license controller of, of your license. Yes. And they're very deeply involved, but inspectors have no access to Netris or MLS or any of that data. I wonder why. I don't know why. It would be very yeah. beneficial. Yeah, I bet it would be. Yeah, as a business owner, it would definitely be beneficial. That's but also just looking up statistics and knowing, because mm -hmm. I do, I go to these meetings, these real estate meetings, where they're showing Netris statistics and they're showing the trends of the market and, and how an agent might want to... Uh, pivot or, or change their method in certain neighborhoods, or maybe there's a neighborhood that's selling at top dollar and largely untapped by agents. Right. All that data is available, and that would be really nice if we had it. I'm not sure why we don't, but yeah, they, they don't allow it. That's interesting. Now, with the, the because we're affiliate members at these associ realtor associations, we have access to everything that they provide, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. So Metro Texas one, mm -hmm. uh, Collin County Association of Realtors, and we're going to join Tarrant pretty soon as well. Okay. Yeah. And I, I mean, we have great success there. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they're always teaching classes. People that are curious and hungry for knowledge and, and want to continue their career oh, yeah. are there. So when we advertise there, we get a lot of great oh, feedback in business. Yeah. yeah. Very good. And I, I know Ebby is big on the education, too. Oh, yes. Pushing. Education's important. I mean, anytime I go to any class, it could be online, it could be in person, but I always come away with one tidbit that I usually end up using right afterwards. And I'm thinking, glad I went to that class. We have that same aha moment when we go to these conferences. Maddie and I will go to these three-day conferences, and it's nothing but inspectors talking about inspections. Wow. And it, you know, it, honestly, it's kind of boring, <laughs> but every single one, I walk away with one or two solid nuggets that ultimately, maybe not that day, but over time, change the course of the business for the better. Mm -hmm. And it's just something that you caught and you're like, I never knew we could do that. Right. And I wouldn't have known that if I didn't sit through those three days of boring. Right. Because there's always something mm -hmm. that you get. That's another, you know, thing about real estate. There's, you know, Ebby, which is big brokerage. In our office, uh, we have 100 agents. I think company-wide now it's over 2,000. But going to the office and being around other agents, going to sales meetings and learning things, it's that same thing. You are always learning. And I think, especially with all the changes that are going on right now, you have to be aware. If you're not in a brokerage that's feeding it to you, 
you you got to read about it. You got to go figure it out on your own. Yeah. yeah. And it is nice to have that the manager, the team leader, whoever it is to call it, but I don't know what to do in this situation. Right. We're just other agents. Um, yeah. You know, in my office, I sit around two agents that are in their 70s. They've been doing this, you know, 30, over 30, 40 years. It's incredible. To it me. is. Yeah. It is. You can ask, they have a wealth of knowledge. Mm -hmm. You can ask them anything. Mm -hmm. Right. And certain things change, but certain things stay the same, too. Are you big into social media? Because, I, I mean, we talk about older agents right now, and I know that uh, I see some mid-60, 70-year-old agents, I mean, holding the phone up, oh, taking yeah. a video of a house. I don't know, props to you, man. Oh, yeah. No, I don't. You do <laughs> <laughs> I'm there, but no, I, I don't do much on social media. Well, we're going to boost that for you with this. We got... <laughs> Good. Yeah, we sh so we'll shoot it in the verticals because the, 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 everything's angled perfectly so we can do the horizontal nice wide shots for uh, YouTube mm -hmm. and then the vertical format for Instagram, Facebook, all the reels. And then we'll, we'll collaborate on Instagram or Facebook with you and all you got to do is hit yes and then it'll be co-fed to everyone that watches you. So oh. any of your aha moments that you've had, we'll pick out and then post. Okay. And fun. that will then drive content to the main video. All right. And all your information's in the description below. It works. It really does. As much as I dislike some social media and what it's done, I, it is a very powerful tool. Oh, for sure. And no I, doubt. Yeah. At my construction business, I don't advertise, period. I don't buy anybody anything. I don't tell anyone about it. All I do is post a story on Instagram. Wow. Three times a week, four times a week of the progress of a job. Wow. And I have never had to advertise, and there's uh, four full-time employees, and That's we do amazing. big projects with subcontractors. Yeah. Right. Just through social media. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So, get on it, Becky. Let's, come on. <laughs> it works. So, if you're not doing that, what are you doing to bring yourself business? I, I would assume word of mouth, if you've been around for 20 right. years. Yes. Oh. It, it, it's all word of mouth. All word of yeah, mouth. I really don't do anything, which... This is probably not what you want to hear on your podcast, but. <laughs> but, it, I mean, that's different than a lot of agents. Mm -hmm. However, that would indicate to me that the quality of service you're providing people is so good that they have to tell their friends. I hope so. The, I mean, I don't know why else they would. You know, it's, yeah. there's always, it's like that the service that's really bad, you tell everybody it was Yikes. a terrible experience. The service that was just fine, no one ever talks about. And you have to be so much up above that level of just fine yeah. in order for people to be like, oh, she was good at her job. Yeah, I hope so. So I got a call this morning from uh, a referral and looking forward to helping them buy a house soon. So, yeah, I... I oh, great. We'll get an inspection. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. No, I've been very fortunate. It That's has excellent. been word of mouth. Future plans, you're going to build a giant team or are you just going to keep... Keep on what you've been doing. Yeah, just keep, just keep going. Yeah. I think as an agent, I never aspired to be a huge agent. I always just, I wanted the business that I knew I could personally take care of. Yeah. That's important to me, the personal touch. Um, I'm happy with the business that I have. Sure, I could be doing more, but would that make me happy or would that make me Miserable. Unhappy. Yeah. 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 And I think that's important in life. Oh, hugely. Yeah. Hugely important. Yeah, it's, and I, I do think a lot of agents kind of get caught up in the image. I notice that in this industry, mm -hmm. the, the watch, the car, the whatever it is, mm -hmm. it's a, it is, there's a big play on image within real estate. I think that's true. And I don't think I'm in that I that does not matter so much to me um, I don't know many people with Rolexes that are gardening so <laughs> I think you're I think you're safe in saying that yeah don't want to get it dirty but that's um, I have noticed that about the industry mm -hmm. and I think if a lot of people stepped back and said I'm making really good money and I'm happy mm -hmm. why, why am I so driven to show everybody mm -hmm. what I'm doing I think that would help the industry, but for whatever reason, it's a very showy industry. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. And and maybe that's why 
I do have so much repeat business and referrals because um, you're a grounded, down to earth yeah, person. Yeah. yeah thank yeah. you for the words. I appreciate that. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, we're, we've worked with you several times, and I would I would definitely agree with that. I've worked with many agents that are not grounded. Right. You know. Yes. Right. It's the it's the type of guy that pulls up in his BMW. You think it's gonna rain? I <laughs> calm down. <laughs> yeah. So I appreciate that too. I, I like working with agents like you. <laughs> All right. So you're gonna plant anything crazy? You're gonna attempt anything that you haven't yet? I mean, broccoli. That's yeah. interesting. I like broccoli. Broccoli's I don't know good. Beets yeah. are my favorite. Though. Beets. Okay. Yep. Do you have That's any good. experimental one that you're going to try? <sighs> Always. I mean, anything that's new. It's fun to just get seeds and see what comes up. Okay. Do you do the bulbs? I'm not, I don't, my mom always used to do bulbs. Like in the flowers? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy to me that it's alive but dormant. Yes, yes. You just put Hyacinths it in the ground. Hyacinths are really easy, yes. They're beautiful. And that's just a nice, fresh breath air in the springtime. And actually, at the end of winter, you get these gorgeous flowers, and it's, yeah. it's a nice surprise. Yeah. She used to plant uh, morning glories out of the seeds, and they would grow up the fence. Nice. And it's unbelievable how fast those things grow. Fun. Just from the little bag of seeds, and the whole fence is covered in blue flowers. <laughs> it's remarkable. Yes. <laughs> he is. She was able to grow anything. Meanwhile, I can't. A, a plant that, like a cactus, it's going to die at my house. I don't get it, but it's just not my thing. You know, it's kind of like business. You just nurture things. It's yeah. just, it takes the water and the care and just the, the, um, the, the constant reminder that you've got to take care of something. And that's kind of like business, too. That's how I look at it. You know, with, with friends, you call them. With clients, you call them every once in a while. You remember birthdays. and Check in. Yeah. Yeah, keep those, keep the leads happy, planting the seeds. Yeah, right. You're right. That's an interesting but way you, to, to. But you do it because you want to. I mean, that's, you know, there are some clients that you just really hit it off with, and they become friends. A lot of clients become friends. You could probably write a, a blog or something about comparing your gardening to your clients, how you keep the relationships. That that's a great idea. Fostering them. Yeah, there you go. All right, I want to mention in that somehow. <laughs> You'll get me doing more on social media after this, huh? <laughs> there you go. All right, Becky, well, I've enjoyed our chat. Thank Thanks. you so much for coming on. Thank you for having it's me. It's been a pleasure. So we're going to put all of Becky's information down below, uh, email, text, all the any way that you want to contact her will be down there if you're interested in any real estate. Uh, apparently, just word of mouth keeps her busy, so uh, I hope we don't flood you with too much. But thank you for watching. Thanks for coming thank on. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. you for having me. Of course.